Okay. Now it's cold down here in Benton County. It's cold and wet. So, okay. The last couple times I've made things that my grandson ate, but he didn't. He likes other stuff. So tonight, we're going to make some sloppy joes, and it's made a special way. And what I'm going to do is make some french fries or tater tots. And I bought some cheese, some grated cheese, and we're going to take them, um, we're going to take the tater tots and pour the sloppy joes over them. And I know that sounds wild, but my grandson, he's going to love it. And just for good measure, I'm going to put, um, make some green beans with some bacon, a little bit of bacon grease in it. He loves green beans too. So it'll be down uh, the kind of meal that my husband and grandson really likes. So I'm going to start with four pounds of ground chuck and a medium onion. I've got it in here to uh, chop it up. Now the reason why I'm doing four pounds is because that way there'll be a little left over. Like tomorrow night when we go to church, they can just come in and have a sloppy joe and some cheesy potatoes or something. So, because later I'm going to make some of them. Anyway, I've my nose has been opened up, so if you hear me sniffle a little bit, it's because of these beautiful little things here. But I'm just going to go ahead and chop these onions up in a little chopper. This has got a bigger handle on it. So, yeah. the onions and I've got my big cast iron skillet and I've had it on low and I put a little just a tad bit of oil to get it good and hot in here I always like to start it a little earlier to get it um, hot all the way around because it'll keep it it'll keep a nice even cook so I've got all these little chopped onions I just chopped. And we'll put them in there. Now if you don't like onions, you don't have to put it in. I'm sure, you know, my grandson didn't like the smell of them, but... And tonight I made sure they didn't put a mouse trap or something like that out in my cooking show to make people think that I had mouse trap out. That was completely done on purpose. So I had to delete the ones off of Facebook because I surely didn't want people to think that I had mouse droppings in a trap on my stove. So I deleted it because I thought, now you guys would probably understand that, but a lot of other people <laughs> wouldn't. I told them, I said, no more. One time I went into Dollar General and my grandson went over and got one of them uh, big rubber rats like for toys or dogs or something. And he, I was looking for some cereal and he hid it behind the cereal he knew I was gonna get. And when I pulled that box of cereal up, that thing was looking right at me. And I jumped and then I looked at him and I said, this is your work here. You did this, so yeah. We have times like that. I am making a different take on um, sloppy joes. You put cola in it. And a lot of times, at, like at our church functions or anything with the youth or anything, I put uh, ginger ale in our hot dogs and cook them. Don't put no water in it, just ginger ale. And it just tastes like a ballpark, like out in the ball, big ballparks. It tastes like they're franks. So I'm going to do my sloppy joe like this too. And... It's going to look like a lot of weird ingredients, but I guarantee you it'll be good. And you can make it to your own uh, liking. But I'm going to start out with this onion here. 
And I'm sure my grandson don't like a lot of onion, but if you say sloppy joe, he won't care. He'll just eat it because he loves sloppy joes. So I'll turn this up just a little bit. I'm going to get them onions a little lucid there where you can see. And that way they won't be crunchy. They'll cook real good in there. So I guess we have to name this one too. It's going to be, it's going to have Pepsi in it. It's going to have ketchup. And of course, onions, garlic. It's going to have Worcestershire sauce. And I'm going to put a little bit of minced garlic in it. And I have a secret ingredient I'm going to put in there. I'm going to try. I'll tell you what that is in a little bit. And Worcestershire sauce. Did I show you that? So we're going to have all these. And I'm not going to put mustard in it. I'm going to put a little dry mustard in it. So... And a little bit of brown sugar and apple cider vinegar, apple cider vinegar. And all them together, when they cook down, they'll marry in together in this cast iron. You could do it in a regular skillet. But what you do is you can make it to where you can pour it over your stuff and then let the lid off and it'll thicken up for your sloppy joes. We always try to think something different. I mean, it's just always, you cook every day, you gotta think up things. And So these are getting pretty lucid. And my husband, <laughs> he's, he's my photo bomber. He said, I said, now I'm gonna do a cooking, little cooking show here. Is there anything I need to see? Because no, I didn't put anything out there to make you embarrass you. I said, thank you. Thank you. I mean, he's 79 years old. He shouldn't be playing tricks like that on me. So this is cooking up good. And like I said, I got so much hamburger because I just flipped the onion on my arm. Um, because I want to make extra for them to... I just told them, I said, I want four pounds. They said, how do you want it? I said, just throw it in the bag. Because this big number 10 skillet, it will, uh, it'll take every bit of it. It'll hold it. So we got the onions loosened. Now we'll just get this hamburger kind of fried up. This is not supposed to have a lot of fat in it, so I'm hoping it doesn't. Sloppy Joe with mustard on your sandwich, uh, Pamela, or mustard already made in it? Maybe mustard, cheese, and pickles. I haven't made Sloppy Joe's for a long time. I usually just make hot dog sauce or something. So we're making this funny, uh, Tammy, we're making uh, this funny uh, Sloppy Joe's. <laughs> it's going to have a lot of different stuff in it you're not used to uh, probably seeing. But believe me, when it comes out, it'll be delicious. And while that's simmering for, after I get this all put together, as it's simmering for um, a half hour, I'm going to do the uh, green beans and whatever. I have to get every spoon before I figure out which one I want. So we'll just keep cooking this.
but I know my grandson loves sloppy joes, and I guess he said he did. He always asks me every morning, maybe at night before he goes to bed, what are we having for supper tomorrow? What are we having for dinner? And then he tells me he needs to walk because he stays here so I feed him. What does grandmas do? They feed their babies. But he does walk. And I make sure he gets the water down him, and I do I get the water down me too. I think if you do them two things, you're you're good to go. Yeah, this is going to be good. And I'll have enough in case his dad or somebody comes down. And, and if nobody does, then we'll have some left over. But this week, ground chuck is on sale out to Campbell's, so I thought I'll just get a bunch of that. What a nice grandma. Yeah, I love my grandbabies. That's one thing for sure. Nobody can say I don't love my grandbabies. There's two of them. The, we had them three months apart, and they were six, six months apart, but we had three grandchildren. Three children get married, and they all had babies within six months. So the three oldest ones, the last one, she'll be 18. Then we had two more uh, boys, and they're only six months apart. So they all grew up together, and then we've got Kai. She uh, she's eleven. So we got two. We got one that graduates, and she's in the National Guards. She's been in the National Guards. She gets to come home next week, and. Um, the two, we got two in high school that's graduating this year. And then, of course, we got the baby. She's three. And I don't know what I'm going to do when that baby gets older because I'm used to being around them. Used, that's my life. I mean, I notice she's growing out of that baby stage into that little girl. And I was looking at a video of her when she was born, and I thought, what am I going to do? nothing better than the gifts of God that he gives you. Yep, working on Sloppy Joe's right now, though. Yes, it is a blessing, Tammy. I love it. I wouldn't trade my years with them for anything in this world at all, because I know they were true blessings. And it's so funny, because people used to tease me at church and say, well, you're really blessed by God because you're getting them in threes. <laughs> so It was like having triplets, really, the first three. And they would grow up together, and we got videos of them playing here and dancing to Papaw's bluegrass music and all that kind of stuff. We've just been so blessed. starting to cook up a little bit. Well, Nancy, <laughs> I done told my grandkids, I said, I'm not babysitting great grandkids. I said, I'm going to tell you right now, before you get out and get married and all of that, I'm not babysitting great grandkids. And <laughs> I lied probably. <laughs> I think it just gets, it's like a recipe. It just keeps getting better the more you have. JC's three, so, but she's starting to like her Uncle Tommy and Uncle Paul awful lot and the other bigger grandkids and her sissy and them, so she likes them an awful lot. 
so the time I get with her on the weekdays when I babysit is a, it's about all the time I'm probably going to get with her because she's already wanting to go home with Uncle Tommy and Aunt Janelle and, and Uncle Paul and Hannah and she's already talking about getting her stuff packed up and so she's going to be pretty well spoiled I think get this real fun. sorry about that guys I just threw you out of here three year old grandbabies Teresa yeah my our youngest one is three she just turned three uh, January 31st and I noticed when they turn three they just there's just like this light bulb that comes on their head and they know everything it's something else The baby smelled my hair today because I had that um, Aussie hairspray on it. She said, Memo, I smell your hair. She said, it's disgusting. I thought, where'd you get that big word at? <laughs> she didn't like the smell of Aussie. Anyway, we're gonna we're getting this pretty well to where we it's getting browned. I've turned it up a little bit. Yeah, well, I'm over here at the stove tonight and working with it. So far, Nancy, I have um, the ground chuck and the the uh, onions. I chopped the onions up in my little onion chopper and I made them lucid, you know, where they wasn't real crunchy. And then I added the ground chuck. So that's where we're at right now. There's a lot more ingredients that's going to go in this. There's all kinds of ways. I have a special hot dog sauce I make. It was from the old creamy treat. No, no, not the old creamy treat. The steer in that they used to make. And someone, my sister-in-law that passed away, she had the recipe because she worked down there. And she gave it to me, so every once in a while I make that if we're going to have a big doing. Okay, so that looks pretty brown to me. I hope you guys can see that. Can you see that pretty good? There we go. I got onion on my screen. <laughs> okay, so now that's brown enough. I'm going to turn that back down on low. And we're going to start adding our ingredients. One thing we're going to do is add flour. And you can add cornstarch if you can't have flour. So this is a half a cup. I'm just going to take and sprinkle that over that. Because that's going to help it get the where I want it to be. Of course, I always do that extra little dab there like I always do. Just like peeking at them. What'd you call them? Things we had last night, dumplings. They were really good. Okay, now we've got the half a cup. And you just have to adjust this. Like if you want to make a little bit, probably only put like a fourth a cup of flour in a pound. So now I'm going to take and um, what did I do with it? Put a cup of ketchup in this because I've got four pounds, remember. And I bought some new ketchup. So probably if you do a pound, you would um, just put, I don't know, a few tablespoons. So we'll put that in there.
the flour absorbs some, Nancy, but usually what I do is I just let it in there because this is ground chuck, and I know it's got some grease in it, but it's going to, uh, if I see that there's too much in it at the end, then I just uh, take and uh, strain a little bit of it that way. So we got the flour in there. You might want to get, like not even ground chuck, you could probably get you, uh, if you could afford it, get the uh, ground round kind. Okay, so we got the ketchup in there. Now we are going to put a little bit of brown sugar. You don't have to put that in there either. I'm just going to put a little bit. That's about half a tablespoon. So about a tablespoon of brown sugar. Then we're going to put Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire or whatever you call it. About a tablespoon of that. And we're in the restaurants when, I'm gonna put two tablespoons in for that four pounds. Um, when we worked in the restaurant, uh, I had to make meatloaf and I would make uh, Worcestershire sauce and ketchup together and it made the meatloaf really good. Oh, you made the... Rose made the... Um, the dumplings for tonight. Okay, so we got that. Now we need to put a little bit of um, pure apple cider vinegar. That's my husband's scanner. They had a wreck, a car wreck. So I'm gonna put a tablespoon. Don't put a whole lot of that in, but it's gonna make a difference for you. So we got that. And I'm gonna put a little dry mustard in there. This looks like a lot, but it's not, it's not coming out real fast. Sorry about that scanner. That's about a teaspoon. That on low. And now, we got that. I want to put a little garlic powder in that. That doesn't come out real fast. I suppose I should have put a, open the other end. Once all this cooks together, it's gonna be really nice. And I'm gonna put a little bit of Simply Garlic in it. Meaning garlic salt. Like I said, if you don't like garlic and you don't like the other stuff, you don't have to put it in there. There's going to be some main ingredients that you're going to want to put in this to make a little difference. Okay, now, got that. I'm going to put just a little bit of minced garlic in. It looks like I'm putting a lot of garlic, but really I'm not. I'm just, some of that's just powder. I'm putting about a teaspoon of minced garlic. Let's put two in since I've got the, 
since I've got the four pounds of chuck. Okay. Now, you can use diet cola if you don't drink regular cola or even cola. But I'm going to tell you, I make a lot of uh, recipes with cola, and it makes a whole different picture to your meats and your desserts and stuff. It makes it, that bubbly stuff, I guess, does it. Hi, Paula. Okay. So we're going to, now that we've got all that in there, okay, my husband loves horseradish. I know you probably wrinkle on your nose. Woo-wee. I'm going to put a little bit of that in there. And I'll tell you why I'm doing that. To give it that little tiny, teeny, weeny bite that we need. Just a little bit. It probably is not going to make a whole lot of difference at all. But I want to put it in there. Okay, now. Let me see the thickness of this. Okay, that's pretty thick. But by the time I get... I'm going to put a little bit more flour into that. And I'll write out a recipe, whatever you want, like if you want a pound, two pounds, three pounds, four pounds, to make it a little easier. But like I said, I'm making a lot because it's going to, we'll be using it. My grandson and husband, they'll probably eat a lot of it. And on Thursday nights, I don't like to cook a lot because we have church and everything. And then tomorrow night, I'm not. I'm going to be walking. Uh, my granddaughter is having a senior uh, award ceremony at, at the high school. So I'll be out there walking her across the, the gymnasium, me and my husband. So I won't want to cook before that. Uh, Rose, we're making uh, sloppy joes, the homemade good old sloppy joes. Now, the next ingredient is Pepsi. I am a Pepsi drinker, and I got to be very careful about how much of it I drink. But you can use Dr. Pepper, you can use Mountain Dew, you can use any cheap cola. But I'm using Pepsi because that's my my preference. I will keep praying for your husband, Keith, Rhonda. Thank you for asking, and I will definitely do that because that's one thing I do. You can ask anybody around. They know that I believe in prayer. So we're going to put, like, see that bubbling up on that, that cola? Believe it or not, it's going to tame a little bit of the ingredients. And that bubbling you see is going to make this out of this world good. Now when I make my um, apple dumplings, I use Mountain Dew. And I got that recipe off of Chris Cook for you, or I think that's what it is. Chris Cook. I got that recipe off of her. So see that, you can see the difference in the consistency already with that. I'm supposed to put a whole bottle in, but I've got this skillet pretty well full here. <laughs> Still bubbling it, and it's turning into a different consistency. You could really probably use this for your hot dog sauce, too. Let's 
see that consistency's changed already. I don't think I'm going to put any more Pepsi in it because I don't think it needs any more. I seen this recipe somewhere on YouTube and it didn't have really a name. I just seen a woman making it. But she didn't have the ingredient all the ingredients I do because I like to I can about tell what it's going to taste like by what I put in it. And believe me, I'd never come up with something like this myself. Okay, so now I'm just going to take and let that get that all mixed up in there. Okay, the key to this now, after putting all these ingredients in. Okay, Laura. So, I'm going to take my um, big lid, and I'm going to put over that and just let it cook for a half an hour while I'm doing the green beans and the, the french fries or whatever we're going to put them over. Or I might make some cheesy potatoes like I've made on my blog. But either way, I'm going to let this cook down in this iron because it'll really be good once it cooks down. Once I put this like this, it's going to be like a Dutch oven. It's just going to slowly, I've got it on low, and I'm just going to let that slow cook for a while until that all gets cooked down in there really good. And then, uh, I know my grandson and my husband's gonna like it. The only thing I wished I had for some reason is some coleslaw. Been hungry for coleslaw, but anyway, I'm gonna put the lid back on this and I'll go do this. And then at the end, when I put together the um, what we're having, I'll come back on live and, and do just a little uh, four or five minute thing and show you how we're going to put all that stuff together. So there it is cooking up. And like I said, if I see where it needs that uh, extra grease out of there, I'll take it out. Uh, I'm an old, I've been down here in the hills for so long. I don't think grease is really plugging me, <laughs> but I will take some out. That's for sure. If I see any like red grease or anything, I'll take it out. So we'll let this go and then I'll be back um, probably a half hour, a little over 45 minutes or something and let you see how I'm going to put their plates together and taste it and see how that does. And believe me, this is a recipe that once you put it in the refrigerator and heat it back up, it's going to be even better. The longer it marries in there, the better it gets. So God bless you all. I'm glad you come on. Um, Rose, I hope you do make that and I hope you enjoy your um, dumplings. Uh, mine's gone. That big pan I made of dumplings last night, they're gone. I had two lady visitors that came and ate some. My husband ate some, and then before he went to bed, he ate some more. My grandson and I had a couple of the dumplings, a bowl of them. And they are really good. I'm going to do them good. Thank you, Christine, for that easy, easy recipe to make them. And someone told me once to, or yesterday, one of the ladies said that we could just use biscuits, like the kind of biscuits you get in a can. But I kind of like Christina's recipe, her mom's recipe, because then you can put however much salt or pepper or whatever you want in that mixture. And it really, they really tasted good. And, and since you all talked me out of peeking all the time and stirring, they turned out real fluffy and, and awesome. So thank you for getting me not to stir them things. I was ha I was just like a kid at Christmas. So, God bless you all. If you anybody needs any prayer or anything, just write in the comments. I'll be sure to do that for you. Anyway, God bless you, and I'll be back after a bit.